Good morning and welcome to Mountain View Community Church Online. I'm Kathy Seymour, the Early Childhood Coordinator here at Mountain View. I'm here in one of our nursery classrooms and it is super quiet. I'm used to all those baby snuggles, giggling toddlers, joyous noise of active preschoolers, and giving stroller rides to the kids that need them. But I have to say that my goldfish cracker consumption has gone way down since I'm not hanging out with preschoolers. I've talked to many children's ministry volunteers over the last few weeks, and they miss your kids too. Their love and care for your children is a testament to their dedication in helping to raise up the next generation to know and love God. I think it's the parents, though, that miss the volunteers the most. Today is a special day. Today is Mother's Day, the day that we honor and thank moms for all that they do. So kids, be sure to give your moms extra hugs and kisses today. The Children's Ministry staff and I want to wish all moms a great Mother's Day, and we send our love and prayers to our whole church family. Join me in worshiping and hearing the word of God from our pastor, Jermaine. Baby 
Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Say love you, Mom. Love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day, we love you. Happy Mother's Day, love you, Mama Walker. Happy Mother's Day, we love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, we just want to say Happy Mother's Day to Mama Walker and Mama Laverne. We love you guys. Love you. Love you. Happy Mother's Day, we love you. Hey mom, happy Mother's Day from your daughter, Austinette. <laughs> we love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, mommy, we love you. Mother's Day, and I love you so much. I love you, mommy, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, mommy, I love you so much. Hi, Nanny. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mama. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thanks for everything you do for us and take care for us. We love you. Hope you have a good day. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. Have a good day. We love you, Mom. You're the best. Happy Mother's Day. We love you, Mom. You're the greatest. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, love happily and rich. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, and Happy Mother's Day to all the great moms at MVCC. We love you, Mommy and Nana. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day, Mommy. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Mommy. You're the best. Mother's Day. <laughs>
of sheep. And one day, a prophet named Samuel, this is in Samuel 6, 1 Samuel 16, comes knocking on David's door. He introduces himself. He talks to David's dad. He talks to all of his brothers. And he finally comes to David. He says, David, you're going to be the next king of Israel. Soon after that, David faces off with this Philistine warrior, a giant named Goliath. And David takes out Goliath with a slingshot and a rock. Now, for those who are listening at home, particularly the little kids, just listen to me for a second. And mom and dad, you can listen as well. We're going to have a little contest uh, that's going to run today and Monday and Tuesday. And we want to encourage all the little kids to draw their best picture of David versus Goliath. And we're going to give a giveaway. And so the way this works is mom, dad, after the little ones have finished their picture, just take a picture of it on your phone and post, post it to one of our social media accounts, whether it's Facebook or Instagram. And we're going to announce that winner on Wednesday, David versus Goliath. You can find this story in 1 Samuel 17, or you can find this in any children's Bible. It's an incredible story. So David takes out Goliath with a slingshot and a rock, and everyone begins to chant, David, David. Everyone at home, do this with me. David, David, David. And soon after that, David actually becomes king of all of Israel. David starts off as a shepherd, and now he becomes a king. It's an incredible story. It's an amazing story story. David has it all. He has fame and fortune. He has influence. He has literally everything that he needs. And one day, one day when he's actually supposed to be on the battlefield, he's at home and he looks out the window and ironically and unavoidably, he sees a woman named Bathsheba. He sees her. He likes her. They hook up. She gets pregnant. He panics and he assassinates her husband, yeah, she was married. This is when things really go bad. And so David, he panics, he goes a little bit crazy. And so all of a sudden, he has all this power, all this influence, all this flame, but he's messed up hugely. David, by the time he pens this incredible song, he has lived quite a life. In fact, David is very much in touch with the human condition. Now, I'm all for asking questions, questions like, hey, what is my purpose or why am I here or am I loved or, or better yet, uh, 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 am I an accident? I mean, those are good questions that we need to ask. But my challenge to you and challenge for me is that the questions that we ask when we're 22 are not the same questions that we ask when we're 72. The questions that we're asking pre-pandemic, hopefully are different questions now and even different questions when we ask post-pandemic. Again, I'm all for asking questions because when we were younger, we would ask questions like, what am I going to do when I, when I grow up? And, and then we move to, okay, well, why am I here? What is this all for? We, we then get a job. We, we then get the retirement plan. We we start a family, we even get a dog, and, and all things are busy. Sometimes our weekends are actually busier than our weekdays. Life is full, and we're trying to find stuff for ourselves. We're trying to find stuff or time for church, but life is just full and busy. And so all of a sudden, we start asking different questions in this period, in this time in our lives, because all, things have changed for us. Things have not only gotten busy, but now we've moved into a minivan. We have a minivan now, and it seems like things are crazy. Kids are going everywhere, and you have Cheerios and Legos and dishes and laundry everywhere and you stop asking the questions okay what is this all for why am I here you start asking the questions where did my hair go and then the kids grow up and you move down south somewhere you put a few extra pounds on you get a custom-made golf cart and the kids visit every once in a while and you're stuck asking the same questions you did in your adolescence what was this all for again or, or, or why are we doing this? 
And again, I'm all for asking questions, but how about we get some answers? Enter David's hit song, Psalms 139. Hopefully you're there, but join me. First one, it's incredible how David opens this up. He says, oh Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. Right off the bat, David answers one of those big cosmic questions, am I known, a.k.a. does anyone really know me? Maybe you've been asking that question during this pandemic time. Does anyone know me? Does anyone really know my issues, my struggles, my passions, my desire? It's a cry for intimacy, and no matter your background, your economic status, where you come from, your ethnicity, whether you're an extrovert or introvert, we all have this desire. Does anyone or does someone really know me? And David says in verse 2, God, you know me. You know when I sit down or when I stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. Essentially, you're always around me. You place your hand of blessings on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Which is to say, God, David say, man, God, you haven't given up on me in spite of all the things I have done. You, you've stayed near me. You, you know me. You're, you're for me. You actually care about me. You care about those massive, magnanimous things like the stars and the moon, but you also care about the gas in my car. You care about my finances. You care about my job. Yes, even in these crazy and weird and unique times, you care for me. You care about me. And then David says in verse 7, I love this. He says, I can never escape from your spirit. Notice all the exclamation points. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to the heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there. David gets metaphorical here. He says, if I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. What David is saying here is that, God, you're always there. Remember, David the king, he even messed up. He's like, okay, if that, that means, okay, when I was a good king, you were there. Even when I was a, a bad king, you're there. And that's reassuring for you and for me, particularly me as a parent, because I can go, God, when I was a good parent, you were there. Even when I was a, a bad parent, You were there. When I was a good or a bad spouse, you were there. When I was a good or or bad friend or neighbor, you were there. When I was a good kid or even a bad kid, you were there. David is saying, everywhere I turn, you're, you're there. You see, I realized, and maybe you realized during this time, no one wants to be alone. We want to be left alone, but no one really wants to be alone, which brings up this other question that David presents. David is basically asking, and he's even answering, is there somebody out there for me? Is there someone out there for me? This speaks of security, identity, and fulfillment. He says, man, God, God, you, you, not only are you there, but you're actually for me. You're holding dear to me. And this is what he says in verse 11. I love this. He says, I can ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become light. I think David is also talking about the dark things in our life. Verse 12, he says, but even in darkness, I can't hide from you. The reason is God's not scared of the dark. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. David is singing himself happy. He is giddy. I mean, I love being giddy about certain things. In fact, I'm going to challenge everyone at home to do this little thing. Please do it. Please try it. There's something about dancing. Now, some of you, you can't dance. Praise God, you're not here. Praise God, we're online. We don't want to embarrass anybody. The only people you're going to embarrass is yourself and your kids or whoever's around. But I want to challenge you just to dance. Maybe you just do a little shoulder shimmy right where you 
Julia said, there's something about dancing. When you even you do this little shimmy, you have to smile. David is dancing. David is giddy. He is happy. He's singing. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. You are not alone. David even goes further in verse 13. I love this. He says, man, you made, he's talking about God, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Verse 14, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex, aka I'm not an accident. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watch me as I was being formed in utter seclusion as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. God saw you before we even had eyes. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day has passed. David is saying, man, I don't have to worry whether or not God is involved or whether or not God cares. God, David's Hit song, hits home. He's saying, man, God is involved. God is involved. He actually has a book on me. Now, remember, David is the one writing this. Now, and, and as he's writing this song, you got to remember that God has a book on David. And one of the chapters in David's book is adulterer. And another chapter is murderer. And so God at any moment in time could have destroyed that book, but, but he doesn't because God's love is, is so vast and so huge that God, that David goes, man, God, you saw me even before I was formed. You actually have a book. You have a scrapbook on me, all of my highlights and all of my lows. David says in verse 17, he says, man, how precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God? They cannot be numbered, exclamation point. There's another one there, verse 18. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still there. David makes this huge point and don't miss this because this has hit me hard over the years. I don't know about you, but there are times, and this is probably the biggest errors in my, in my life. Oftentimes, I, I, when I think about God, I, I've made God more like me than me becoming like him. I have made God in my mind so much like me. And because I don't think about God all the time, therefore, he must not think about me all the time. That's a huge error. I think that, well, maybe he has bigger and more important things to do, but don't make God in your image. We are made in his. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And check this out. You and I are always on his mind. I think that's a song somewhere. God says, no matter what you did, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're going through, I'm standing there right by your side. I know, in fact, I even know what you did the other day. I even know how you thought these bad thoughts or even cursed me out, but I'm still here. This is a pause for an amen moment. It's okay to say amen at home. There's no one around that's going to look at you. But David has worked himself into this official lather. He's emotional. He's like, man, God knows me. God is with me. God has made me. He's excited. God is always thinking about me. And then all of a sudden, this pop song turns into more like hard metal like Metallica, because look what it says in verse 19. Oh God, if only you would destroy the wicked, right? Get out of my life, you murderers. You can almost hear like, da, 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 da. verse 20, they blaspheme, they blaspheme you and your enemies misuse your name. Oh Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? This is a rhetorical question, but I, I, I love it because it's so much the the human condition, because David is saying, man, God, you know me, you're for me, you care for me, you actually made me, you can't stop thinking about me. If, and if anyone has a problem with you, they got a problem with me. David's like, God, just point me in the right direction. I'll take them out for you. You got to love that. 
And then David concludes in verse 23, he kind of lands the plane in this song. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. What David is simply saying here is, God, I want more of you. Yeah, I have fame, I have fortune, I have influence, I've had high moments, I've even had low moments, but what I really, really, really want is I want to know you and I want you to, to know me. God, I'm even inviting you into the dark spaces of my life. And I don't know where you're at in your relationship with God. Maybe you are really close with them. Maybe, just maybe you have pulled away from God, but make make no mistake, God has never pulled away from you. And this is kind of like where I want to land for today. Just two final thoughts as I think about David's hit song, as it hits home in my life, and maybe it hits home in your life as well, that God's love is so vast and so huge that, that God loves you and me in spite of who we are. In spite of all the things that we've done, all the mess ups that we have done, all the mistakes that we have done, God loves us in spite of who we are. And the second point is probably even bigger than than the first. That not only does God love you, but God actually likes you. I mean, think about it for a second. God not only loves you, he actually likes you. And I know there are many people that you love, but you don't necessarily like. Don't say amen too loud, okay? God actually not only loves you, but he also likes you. And because of God's vast, amazing love for us, the challenge for you and for me is even during this crazy and weird and unique time for us to draw closer to him. That's been my prayer. That's the challenge that God has given me, and I pass that on to you during this time. As you have more time, as you are sitting at home, maybe you have to get away from your kids for a little bit, or even your spouse by going in the car and just kind of yelling or just being vocal or just kind of praying or just asking God, saying, God, I just want more of you. I think this is a great time where we can hit pause on a lot of things and say, God, I just want more of you. God loves you in spite of who you are and what you've done. And not only does God love you, he actually likes you. Again, I don't know where you're at in your relationship with God. Maybe you're close. Maybe you have gotten closer during this time. Maybe you're struggling through this time. We are here for you. We want to know those things. We've tried to reach out. I welcome you to reach out again. So maybe today is a day where you make a decision that you're going to follow Jesus. Maybe you you kind of left the church, you've been away from God for a while. Maybe you've never had a relationship with him. Today is a day where God has his arms wide open, ready to receive you. And as we close this morning, my, my prayer is that you will accept this incredible invitation from him. And in fact, we're just going to bow our heads and right where you're at. I know this weird, just bow your heads, pray with me. And, and, and if you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let today be that day. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your amazing word. We thank you for David and his hit song and how it relates so well to us. I pray for all those who are in situations that, that I may not understand or, or, or they may not even fully understand as they're, they're battling with loneliness or they're battling with just frustration or they're battling with their job situation, whatever it is, Lord God, you care for them. I pray that people will hear that, that you actually care for them, that you're actually for them. And I also pray, Lord God, for those who need to enter relationship with you. I pray right now, Lord God, for those individuals who say, okay, I'm ready. I want to invite Christ in my life. And if that is you, would you just simply pray this prayer? Heavenly Father, please forgive me of my sins. I have messed up. I've made some bad choices, but I want your amazing love. Please forgive me, Lord God. And I receive you not only as my Lord, as my Savior, but I receive you as first in my life. In your precious name, 
Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Please tune in on Monday through Friday, actually Monday through Saturday, as we continue to do our daily devotions. And next week, Pastor Guy starts our awesome new series in the book of Ruth. So this song is called The Blessing, and we just wanted to sing it this morning as a blessing over um, our church, our families, um, our country, and our world. Um, it's just a reminder that uh, no matter the season that uh, we may all be going through right now, um, the season that you may be going through as a family or with your children um, or whatever it is, God loves you, God cares for you, He goes before you, and He is with you.
Hey guys, Pastor Kenny here. Thanks so much for worshiping with us. I hope you are encouraged by the message that we serve a God who is affectionate for us despite ourselves. And if this was your first time with us, we're especially glad that you joined us. We hope you heard a message of that God who does love you. But we'd love to connect with you as well. And so if you go to mvccfrederick.com and click on the I'm new button, we'll follow up with you and we have a gift to send to you just to say thanks for being with us. But maybe you've been here for a few weeks or months or even years and you're, you're wondering what that next step is or, or how to get more involved at Mountain View. I remember feeling the exact same way when I went away to college. I was growing in my faith and for the first time ever, I had to choose what church to go to without the assistance or guidance of anybody else. And after about three weeks of attending one church, I remember thinking, I, I wanna grow more. I wanna get more involved with this church, but I didn't know how. Now, eventually, God was continuing to grow me. I did get involved. I was able to serve as a middle school leader. But I remember being frustrated and unclear at the beginning and confused on how to do that. And we don't want that for anybody here at Mountain View. And that's what Connect Track is all about. It's a three-step small group experience to help you grow in your faith and find your role and your part at Mountain View. So if you're interested in learning more or registering for it, you can go to mvccfrederick.com and click the Connect Track icon and you'll find all the information there you need. Finally, I wanna thank you, church. Thank you for your faithful, generous giving. Because of you, we've been able to bless numerous residents at Pleasant View Nursing Home in Mount Airy. We've been able to encourage countless healthcare workers around Frederick County. And because of you, we were able to provide multiple meals for 50 families in Baltimore in partnership with Still Meadow Community Fellowship. And all of that is because of your faithful giving. So thank you. Because of your giving, we can continue to proclaim the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ across this county and show the love of God. So I just wanna encourage you to continue giving and you can do so in three ways. Online, by text, or by mail. So thanks again for worshiping with us and we hope you'll have a great week. Let's close together in prayer. 
God, we thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for your love for us and your affection for us, even despite ourselves. The times where we run for you, we sin against you, and we want nothing to do with you. God, we thank you that you still love us and you care for us. Lord, I thank you for the ways that you've blessed us and allowed us to be a blessing to others during this season. I pray that you continue to provide for each one of us in the many ways we need. Um, but God, we pray that you'd help us to encourage and love on others through this time as well. Pray that we would just have a great rest of our week and a great day as well, celebrating uh, what you have done and what you will do through us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.